the group uh, Boko Haram. Is the government uh, still thinking of granting amnesty to the group or the stand remains that, uh, well, no amnesty for any terrorist? Well, first of all, let me say that uh, there's been a lot of confusion uh, in recent weeks uh, over the uh, the call by the Sultan of Sokoto uh, for amnesty for Boko Haram uh, members. Um, and uh, a lot of politicians have jumped on board to confuse the discussion. And uh, it's been so politicized that uh, if you listen to what people are saying from outside, you hardly ever know uh, the position of the federal government, which has been stated by me several as Minister of Information of this country. First of all, let me say that uh, it was the federal government that first offered uh, dialogue. We made that very clear during uh, the discussions the federal government had after the committee that was set up uh, to look at uh, the, the Boko Haram uh, situation in the Northeast. The federal government did come up with the position that it was ready to negotiate uh, with uh, the insurgents uh, and that in spite of the attacks, in spite of the ideologies, in spite of the ugly attacks on ordinary citizens, the federal government was still prepared to discuss with members of this group. We offered that severally, but nobody really came up uh, to take the call by the federal government for dialogue. And you recollect that severally some members of the group will issue statements and say they were ready for discussion with the federal government. Another group will come out and say that uh, it, it, it's fake and they were not the ones issuing um, uh, the call for dialogue. And as recently as about four weeks ago, uh, the Bruno State Government announced that um, they struck a deal with Boko Haram for uh, a truce for negotiation to start. And Nigerians will recall that shortly after, some sections of the group also come out to say uh, that so-called uh, that the agreement with Bruno State Government was false. And so, the, the, to restate this, the, the position of the federal government, the president has said it personally, and I've repeated it to the nation severally, that the federal government has never ruled out the options of dialogue. We know that in every war, in every conflict, in the end, combatants do come to the negotiation table. But you cannot offer amnesty as the first option when nobody has come out to discuss with you. If you read the statement by the president in Bruno State, the president didn't really say there will be no amnesty. But he said he was looking forward to see uh, who will stop, step, step out uh, to talk to the government, uh, who will take responsibility. Uh, who come out and say, look, we are the members, or I'm speaking on behalf of this group. And then amnesty is usually an outcome of a discussion, a negotiation. How does the leader of a nation whose citizens are being attacked offer amnesty unconditionally without negotiation, without anybody coming forward to say, look, we accept amnesty as a principle? So when uh, the Sultan of Sokoto, whom we respect because he has been a partner with the federal government, uh, in campaigning to stop Boko Haram attacks in the north. Far more than any leader in the north, the Sultan of Sokoto has been very frank uh, in calling for ceasefire, in calling on the group to lay down their arms. And when, they, when he made the call, uh, the president said, didn't say there would be no amnesty. What the president said was he was looking forward to an opportunity where maybe members of the group would step out and say, look, we are members of this group, we are the leaders, we are prepared to talk to government, Amnesty can be offered unconditionally when no, even members of the group have not accepted amnesty. None of them has come out to say anything. So how does a, a leader of a nation whose citizens are being attacked and killed uh, in a heinous way, like we're witnessing in Nigeria, just comes out and say there will be amnesty? We should not forget that this, this terror is not only in Nigeria. In Pakistan, they have been suffering with this for the past 10 years. Uh, we have not seen the government of Pakistan come out and say, well, amnesty or Yemen, amnesty, or Algeria. Yes, amnesty could be a part of the solution, but that can only come out in the process of dialogue and negotiations. But how to offer it unconditionally will be very, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's not known. Uh, and I think that uh, so much politics have been played over this call by the Sultan of Sokoto. That week I was asked, when uh, would the government accept amnesty? I said, well, I'm not the president of Nigeria. But I hope the group will listen to the sultan who is pleading on their behalf. So I, I think, honestly, Nigerians should not over-politicize this issue. People continue to compare it to the Niger Delta. We must not forget that amnesty in the Niger Delta came after a series of discussions and negotiations led by leaders of the Niger Delta region and the combatants. 
in the creeks. It was after negotiation reached a certain point and there were commitments that the issue of amnesty came up. It was not gratis. It was not just offered without condition and negotiation. So I think politicians should allow uh, this matter uh, to be taken as a security and national issues. And those looking for votes in 2015 should not unduly over-politicize this issue of amnesty. The president never said, we are the ones looking, talking about negotiations. And several groups even came out and said, we are speaking on behalf of the group. At a point, the Boko Haram announced General Buhari as their spokesperson in the negotiations. And the president said he was prepared 